And joining us via Skype this time from London is the CEO of Diaspora, PR Jermaine Sowolu. Thank you for joining us on the show. Thanks for having me. Yes, President Trump is talking again and many countries are on their toes. Are you uh, worried as well? Uh, well, I believe uh, when you talk about nuclear weapons, um, <laughs> everyone has to be worried because um, we know how President Trump is. And uh, we know that Iran um, possibly has some um, nuclear um, weapons. And that region's stability is dependent upon the um, America and the world um, over coming together to reach an agreement whereby um, Syria, Iran, and the forces in those areas do not actually um, do what they're not meant to do. Now, when it, when it comes to this, this crisis with Iran and Syria and, and all the deals, uh, putting timeline, do, do you think that it puts more pressure on everyone as to trying to meet the deadline? Hmm. Yes, absolutely. It puts uh, more pressure. As you mentioned earlier about the May 12th um, deadline and President Trump, um, as of last week, most people actually believing that he may um, step out of the agreement and you know this is a, a president who stepped out of the climate agreement and did not really care what the world thought um, he, he has a belief that the deal the joint um, comprehensive plan of action that um, France, um, Germany, um, 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 UK, and also um, America actually signed to ensure that Iran's um, armed um, weapons and nuclear um, program is actually curtailed, limiting their progress. But I believe what Donald Trump wants is an elimination of that process. He believes that this um, deal that they currently have in place that was signed by the Obama administration is not favorable to the U.S. and it doesn't. It still gives Iran, so to say, uh, a, a head's way to keep on um, um, building weapons and causing a threat. Now, when it comes to Syria, we know that Syria is a very, very is a, is, is a very, very hot spot right now. There's a lot of war going on right now, and in Iran's role in that, it is believed that Iran has recruited up to um, 80,000 Shiite fighters. And if President, Obama, President Trump, I beg your pardon, um, steps out of that agreement, um, the, um, Iran has actually threatened that it will, um, it, 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 it will take action. But people don't really know what kind of retaliatory action it promises to take. And it sets those fighters loose to cause havoc. We know places like Lebanon, Yemen, and Syria will be affected. Um, so people are on their toes. People are watching very carefully to see what actually happens. In fact, I was about to ask that, uh, that if President Donald Trump uh, moves ahead to pull out of the agreement and, of course, starts sanctioning Iran all over again, uh, the worries, really, of Iran taking drastic decisions just to protect itself. Yes, they, they, they will. They will. They will um, have that um, natural instinct of self-preservation to ensure that nothing happens to them. They are, uh, they've been known to be funding a lot of terrorist organizations and um, possibly this would be another uh, um, avenue for them to, to vent out and say um, they, they are going to um, keep on developing their nuclear weapons and you know state nations such as Israel we just celebrated 70 years of um, um, being a nation right now could be a threat because Iran has um, um, vowed or so to, 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 to take that nation out of um, the face of the earth, the map, so to say. So it is a very, very dicey um, re um, situation that we are in right now. Hopefully, Donald Trump, President Donald Trump, will actually look at the things, um, the pros and cons, and stand um, for unity. You know, and we know that Russia, China, um, and, and other European nations and the U.S. signed to ensure that that deal comes in place. And if he steps out of it, it will cause a lot of instability in that region. We know a lot of thousands of people are dying daily in Syria. Iran still has a lot of problems. We don't want President Trump to actually just cause, um, step into the picture, or step out of the picture and bring um, um, instability in that region because he's already played with a lot right now. Well, talking about uh, nuclear weapons, uh, mm -hmm. Iran nuclear issues have been on the news for, for so many years. And recently we've just been ha having the issue of North Korea coming on board the news, the news stage. And it's all about nuclear weapons, as the case may be. Now, we are, we're seeing some resolution as far as uh, North Korea is concerned. What's the difference between the two when it comes to resolving these issues? Well, uh, till, till now, in this new season of um, the North Korean leader now becoming more 
um, liberal, quote and unquote, in his views and accommodating the South Korean counterparts mm -hmm. and trying to work out an agreement whereby they can all um, live together in, in unity. You see the crossing of the lines and uh, of, of, of the borders of the nations and they putting up a united front, even in that table Chinese match that they played, there was all unity. So we can see North Korea right now, a nuclear power, um, trying to ensure that things are um, done properly. And Iran is it's known as a nuclear power, but it has a terroristic um, tendency. It is known for terrorist um, ideologies and um, causing wars and sponsoring wars in various nations. So that's the major thing. North Korea has been confined to its, its own region and mm. threatening, you know, through its ballistic missiles to attack places like Japan and other nations and South, and South Korea and all that. But we know that it's, it, it, it's changing its tone of voice. And that's what we have, is expected from Iran. But it seems Iran is still bent on ensuring that it can wreak as much havoc as possible if if um, the, the deal which you say doesn't want to be renegotiated, if people, if the world does not, um, um, do we say coward, do not um, buy into their own vision of what they want things to be done, we know mm. that their banks will actually be affected, the central government will be affected, and also their oil exports to the U.S. and other nations will be affected, and businesses would not like to be doing business with um, Iran again because they know of the U.S. sanctions. So North Korea is opening up and um, Iran seems to be um, closing down. So that's what the major difference is. I would believe that um, if Trump actually makes a decision to, um, to stay in the agreement, then we can now see, hopefully, they will now begin to um, renegotiate and begin to um, um, you know, lower their tempo right down, but rather than being hostile um, mm. to, to other nations. And uh, borrowing a lift from the uh, North Korea formula, which has seen uh, the North Korea now uh, moving closer to its uh, twin country, uh, which acceptable diplomatic uh, uh, strategy would you suggest really for Trump to uh, use to bring Iran closer and make it even stop his nuclear ambition altogether if it's possible? Well, you know, um, President Trump has not been one who has been known for a lot of um, conventional and traditional um, diplomacy. You know, he just nowadays looks for what's the best interest of America and um, ensures that um, his, his leadership style is actually um, taken um, by the rest of the world and understood. So we, we want to believe that if he goes into negotiation, but Iran has said that they don't want to negotiate, renegotiate the agreement. And if any election is done, if terms, are, if terms and conditions are changed, they will retaliate and they will step out of the agreement. So Iran has the part to play, not just President I'm sure President Trump in sideline meetings and other kind of diplomatic ways have tried to negotiate with Iran because um, he believes that that deal was the worst deal ever done um, because it just, it only limits the, their growth in nuclear um, 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 power and growth in, in that aspect of um, empowering themselves to have nuclear weapons. It doesn't stop them from doing it. And if they, they can't be stopped, that means terrorism will not be stopped, the funding for terrorism will not be stopped. That region, Syria, Yemen, Lebanon, um, will always be in a state of um, tension. So I, I believe military option may not be the best way, but a lot of negotiation has to be done between these few days that, 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 that we have leading up to the May 12th, when the, the, the deal has to be, um, the deadline for the deal has to be done. So let's hope that um, the world bodies will come together and talk and present Trump to show better leadership in ensuring that this is resolved. All right. Even looking at it from even a broader perspective, when it comes to the deal with with uh, or trying to arrange a deal to prevent Iran from uh, stockpiling nuclear weapons, is the major focus really the big picture? Is the focus on Israel? Is Israel the reason for all of this in the first place? Well, that's a good question because um, Israel and America are, are, so to say, like one. They are they are strong allies. Um, and America has an, has, believes has an obligation to, to look after a, Israel's interests, you know, and a lot of Israelis who are doing well in America there, it's connected to Israel. Israel, America is the only reason, quote-unquote, um, while Israel still can, can still, so to say, boast in that area, because they, they know they have a big border that is supporting them. That's not taking away the um, uh, military capabilities and technological advances that Israel has made. They are a strong nation on its own, on themselves. But the fact that America is backing them ensures that the, um, the, 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 the nations which are a threat to their own existence around them 
don't can't just go in there and destroy them they have protection so america always looks at it from this point of view that it's this nation going to be a threat to israel has iran changed their stance towards um israel and the answer is no they still are adamant about their position on israel and they still want to do what they want to do to israel so um it all ties down to israel the stability of the middle east um, the warring nations there, Israel has a, a pivotal po um, um, role uh, in the whole matrix of things there. And they too are very strong and they don't, I'm sure they don't want um, Iran to be a nuclear power in that region. Would you say that is the personality of President Trump and the way he has come out almost every time to criticize the previous administration of uh, Barack Obama that is making Iran to be somewhat suspicious of uh, the renegotiation of this deal? Um, well, I, I, it, it's kind of funny, you know, because it seems like President Trump, you know, being a businessman, being a, a, a wants to believe that he's a negotiation expert, you know, in, he wrote that book, The Art of the Deal and all that. He, 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 he sees it as America has taken a very, very weak stance in international um, diplomacy and um, agreement. You know, we know of the, the NAFTA um, agreement, North American Free Trade Agreement and all that. We know that he, he's actually trying to push um, for America to have stronger um, presence and have benefits when it comes to the agreements that are going on there. And also, um, the, the climate agreement right now, where America has been paying so much more and other nations have not been paying so much more um, into the whole, the whole funding of the situation. So in this kind of situation right now, President Trump, in his own view, I think is believing that this deal is not good for America. It's trusting the state safety of America and its main ally, Israel, in that region. So he's looking at it from that point of view that whatever it takes to ensure that Israel is not um, being threatened and the, 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 the power balance in that area is not um, shaken, that's what he's thinking about, right? He wants um, Iran to not to have any weapons at all that could be of threat, not only to Israel, but to the rest of the world. I believe that's why he's taking that stance um, and that attitude. So he's always been America first, American interests and his allies first. So that's why he's actually taking this um, post in this um, um, in this regard. Okay, uh, France France is preparing. In fact, France is looking forward already in case the United States pulls out of this of this deal and, and looking forward to possibilities of going ahead with uh, the other uh, countries that are that are working on the deal with uh, Iran. Now, if the U.S. pulls out, certainly is going to uh, bring a shift mm -hmm. in in the direction of things, but. What scenarios can play out if that happens going forward? Well, um, the first one is that France, um, Germany, um, the UK, Russia, China, and Iran come together and have an agreement and they, 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 they curtail what Iran is doing. They still ensure that they limit it and Iran plays um, ball to it. And the second scenario is whereby America, you know, steps out of the situation um, and um, it's, um, it, it's, it's no longer part of the deal. And what will happen there is that, as I said earlier, many nations, many companies will stop doing business in that region because they know that if America is against what is happening in Iran, anything can happen. As President Trump ordered the strike of um, Syrian air, um, air bases, he could decide one morning to, dis to, to order a strike on an Iranian nuclear force, and that could cause a lot of instability there. So America, um, whether we like it or not, still has a strong role to play in international politics and international security. And if whoever side America leans on is a side, quote unquote, that is actually has the upper hand, so to say. So we want to believe that President Trump will, will, will ensure that he still stays in the matrix. He doesn't step out of the agreement. He joins the rest of the world and ensures that um, there is kind of, you know, tempers are actually um, lessened and lowered at this point in time in that region because that will be the best situation for the rest of the world. Jermaine Sawonlu, CEO of Diaspora PR, thank you very much for your analysis uh, on the show today. Thanks for having me.